Hope you guys are having a fantastic Saturday. I got a ton of information to talk about. New defensive tackle, Odell being confirmed to the Dolphins. Let's jump into this. What is up, Finn fans? Saturday video for you guys, being that my Thursday was jam-packed, and I shorted you one. Did I, though? I love doing videos for you guys, so eh, took a day. But we're going to talk a lot in this video. There's about three different things I want to talk about, some updates and other things. And then uh, something I noticed that I kind of want to talk about. I don't know if it is the title. I don't know what the title of this video is, but let's jump into it. But before we jump into it, even though I said let's jump into it, got a shout out to today's sponsor, Bet us i talked about them yesterday's video i talk about them a lot a fantastic reliable betting site one of the best go check them out little clink clink click the link in the description use the promo code drone 125 your first three deposits 125 percent matched up to 2500 dollars. that's ridiculous you give them a hundred dollars you get like what 125 dollars matched if my math is correct 24 7 customer service 24 hour payouts. They do draft stuff. You could bet on who is the first quarterback taken, who is the first non quarterback taken. Very, very good site. Click the link in the description. And go check them out and see if you feel like it. What does it hurt? What does it hurt to just check it out? You have to be 18 or older and please bet responsibly. So let's jump into this and talk about some of the things going on. So the Miami Dolphins have signed a defensive tackle and I'm going to, I'm just calling him Tart. His first name is Thierry, Thierry Tart, T-E-A-I-R. I'm going to call him Tart because I can pronounce that right. The Dolphins on Friday agreed to a contract with one of the most skilled defensive tackles remaining in free agency, striking a deal with former FIU player Thierry Tart, according to league sources. Tart 27, so he's still young. Started nine games and appeared in 13 last season for Tennessee and had 24 tackles, including eight tackles for loss before being waived in December after missing a practice due to personal reasons. Tart said at the time that he requested the Titans release him. This is where the problem comes in, right? From what I'm hearing about this guy, he is very good. No, I would say very good. He's athletic, and he's going to be a very reliable defensive tackle to put next to Sealer. But here's where the problem comes in, and this is probably why the Dolphins signed him for probably like league minimum, maybe a million, give or take, and they could probably cut him with no <laughs> with no causes or no you know penalties. Come up below, Doug. It's this word, you big dumb. But they say longtime writer Paul. I, I, these names, I'm dyslexic, and reading these names is just hard. Uh, Kaharski, Kaharski, Paul Kaharski reported that the Titans decided to release him after season long issues breaching reached a breaking point. Tart has expressed displeasure with his contract situations, and the Titans became unsatisfied with Tart's effort and attitude. Titans coach Mike Vrabel at times publicly voiced concerns about the defensive tackles conditioning and effort. Houston then signed Tart and he appeared in two regular season games, but was inactive for the Titans two playoff games. Tart missed two games for the Titans last season before a toe injury. Tart started 16 games for Tennessee in 2022 and had 34 tackles, including five for a loss in a sack and a half. He started 10 of 11 appearances for the Titans in 2021 and had 14 tackles and two for loss. Tart played in seven games and started one as a rookie for Houston in 2020 after he uh, after being signed as an undrafted rookie free agent. During his rookie season, he was suspended one game after stepping on Cleveland's White Teller in week 13. For the entire for his entire four-year career, Tart had 79 tackles, 16 for a loss, two and a half sacks, and an interception and a fumble recovery. Pro football focus ranked Tart eighth among free agent defensive tackles in this year's class. With the comment, Tart has a very strange and tumultuous, I can pull that word out, 
can't say anything else 2023 season with the titans after the two sides were unable to come to terms on an extension before the year tart played on the second round restriction free agent tender for 4.3 million but his effort and focus was questioned at times by the coaching staff before he was ultimately waived ahead of 2015 so here's the thing the Vi oh hold on i keep going the vikings in texas because a lot of this is kind of repurposed um but the Titans and Texans also showed interest in Tart this offseason, according to Bleacher Report, Jordan Schultz. The Dolphins opted for Tart over limited group of experienced unsigned free agent defensive tackles, including Lawrence Guy, Nick Williams, Albert Huggins, and Jordan Phillips, who is questioning if he wants to play anymore. Tight is the second FIU player to join the Dolphins, joining tight end Johnny Smith. So it's an up, it's risk, no reward high reward no risk <laughs> i'm losing it today um now here's it, it, it was he lacking effort and was he being disruptive because he wasn't getting his contract and if that's the case you need to take like uh, take some notes of like christian wilkins who was not happy with the contracts he was offered time and time again and he did a sit in so he was still there and then he played the season and had a very good season see what i'm saying like it's what's going on there and i think bringing tart in and bringing in all the defensive tackles that the dolphins did bring in i think it's more of okay we're gonna have a, a bunch of guys and if we could potentially draft draft somebody at 21 at 55 like fisk or if they can dolphins could get fisk at 55 i'd be so happy and feel so much better about our defensive tackle position but we have neville gallimore deshaun hand which i'm glad they brought him back jonathan harris benito jones i'm glad they brought him back isaiah mack uh nixon brandon peely would love to see what he can do and zach sealer so and now we have tart there are some guys that they brought in, like Gallimore, Deshaun Hand, and Benito Jones, that I think could be very serviceable. And again, I'd love to see what Brandon Peely could do in his second year. Um, but I think bringing Tart in, I think it's just going to be like a huge competition at defensive tackle. Now, like I said, and I'm going to go into defensive tackles, and I'm going to go into mock drafts. I'm going to go into who I want at 21. Like I have so many draft videos prepared for you guys. Um, it's going to be ridiculous. If you haven't watched my tackle video, that was out yesterday. Uh, but I feel, I feel like, you know, bringing guys with a ton of upside that needs some help and see who can come out and be like Zach Steeler was claimed off of practice squad from the Ravens and look how good he's turned out. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. So to me, the signing of Tart is okay. You know, he's got upside, but he has some you know character issues and he you know, he's kind of disruptive and if he doesn't get his way he seems like he he kind of you know drags his feet we'll see how that pans out but again i bet you it's like a one it's a one-year contract for like two million and they can cut him whenever and he might be a camp body again to compete one of these guys in gallimore deshaun hand jonathan harris benito jones isaiah mack nixon brandon peely one of these guys or more because we have a ton of defensive tackles on the team and tart are going to have to hey look at me i'm actually doing really well joint practices preseason this guy's popping this guy's popping and then we'll figure that out um because you got to replace christian wilkins it sucks but you got to replace christian wilkins but last thing i want to talk about before i get into kind of the idea of what i want to talk about in this video is odell beckham jr so barry jackson came with um, a little bit of an update yesterday. He said, with the resigning of uh, Kendall Lamb and the early addition of tight end Johnny Smith, the Dolphins only have only two clear needs on offense, and that is a certified number three receiver and an offensive line with the skill set to be a high quality right guard. Dalton Reisner, possibility. We already talked about that and the fact that they talked to two guys, two starting guards, and said, hey, we're going to address this after the draft which i think a lot of nfl teams are doing right now they're kind of contacting these free agents say we're very interested in you but we're going to come back to this after the draft and see who we can get um the dolphins have taken a, a divergent approach with those positions with the number three receiver job they have made an offer to odell and called about tyler boyd and made inquiries on 
others. With the opening guard spot, they have had pro very preliminary talks with representatives for several veterans while remaining non-committal about whether they will be and whether there will be an offer. With the uh, what's clear is this: the Dolphins need a number three receiver or starting guard will diminish or disappear altogether if they address it with the twenty first twenty uh, first pick in the first round of the draft. So again, there are some guys, and that's the next video in my um, prospects video is who I you know what guard looks nice and could fit. You know, you got JPJ, you got Barton. There's some really good guys that could fit in that position, but. This is what I wanted to talk about with OBJ. Tyreek Hill on his, I think this is Snapchat, put this image out with OBJ. Him, the, the both of them hugging. And if I didn't mention this already, which I might have, unless it was on a Patreon video, which if you are a Patreon, you haven't checked up on all the videos, it gave you some little insider notes and stuff the dolphins went through tyreek first from what i'm hearing the dolphins reached out to tyreek hill and said are you okay if we bring in odell uh, because tyreek hill is the number one receiver and you know odell is and was a very you know at one point was a number one receiver and now they don't want that clash of why are you bringing odell in you know you have me blah 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 and supposedly tyreek said yeah man that'd be amazing and then he posts this picture which it's like is that him just reconfirming i would love to have odell here or he they're probably talking and honestly i think that's what a lot of it is is the dolphins are probably like look we have a certain amount of money on the side for a number three receiver we can offer you this, like, I bet you Boyd wants like 12 million a year and the Dolphins are like, we can give you seven. And I bet you Odell's like, I want 10. And they're probably like, we can give you six. There, There's different numbers that they're wanting. And I bet you Tyreek is reaching out to these guys. and like, look, listen, me, you, Waddle. Are you kidding me? Do you know the things that we could do? I get doubled, Waddle gets taken away. You are completely butt naked open. You're going to eat. You know, and then we got Janu, we got all, we got Mostert in the backfield, we got Achan with him. Like, come on, this offense is going to be ridiculous. I feel like that's the conversations that they're having. So, is Odell coming? I don't know. He has a contract in his back pocket. I think you're going to, I think, like I said, right now it is the 6th of April. We got 19 days until the draft. Could a signing happen out of nowhere? Possibly. Um, but I think a lot of teams right now are focusing on the draft. On the 15th next Monday, uh, some, you know, the programs start. I think this is, I don't, I might be OTAs. No, I don't think, I think OTAs. I think it's just like some type of like mini camp situation. Start on the 15th for returning head coaches, new head coaches. I think it starts the week before. So a lot of things are fluid. Uh, you can see who you have, what you have. I know we still have Eric Uzukama. We still have, you know, other receivers on board that can pop and do. Eric Uzukama was doing very good until he had that neck injury. So we'll see. But I think a lot of these NFL teams are kind of staying pat with what they have, focusing on the draft, focusing on moving their draft picks, all that stuff, and then come after the draft. And I think it's May 5th. I want to double check with the date for you guys. Um, it is April 40th, my apologies. So it is the Tuesday after the draft. The Dolphins can sign whoever they want for however much they want, and it won't affect their comp pick. So after April 40th, the Dolphins are kind of locked in with two thirds as long as um, Robert Hunt and Christian Wilkins play the full year. So the Dolphins probably, that's what they're going to do. After Tuesday the 30th, boom, they're going to start signing people. And then obviously after June first they get more money with Xavier Howard's contract being you know after his cut. So those are the things I want to talk about before I get into the meat and potatoes of and I did say potatoes of this video and that is kind of talking about uh, Zach Sealer. Now Christian Wilkins being gone sucks. Uh, what I'm going to talk about isn't diminishing what Christian Wilkins um, has done, w did do, could have done whatever it's more 
giving Steelers some props, giving being like, hey man, like everyone's like, oh, we lost the, uh, Wilkins. We're, we have no defensive tackles. What are we gonna do? And Steelers sitting over in the corner, like, hey man, <laughs> I'm 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 still here. And you might be like, well, Doug, that's because it's Sealer. Look at this. This is from 2020 till now. Yeah, I think it's 2020 till now. Look at these numbers. Now, Christian Wilkins missed two games. I'm going to talk about those two games that he missed, but they both have an interception. Wilkins has a Sealer has a half a sack more. Uh, Wilkins has what? Let's say 30 something more tackles they both have four 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 forced fumbles they are pretty much salt and pepper like they're pretty similar and we're all we're over here sitting and crying about the fact that we lost christian wilkins when we still have zach sealer and those two games in 2020 that zach Se that christian wilkins missed was week 10 against the chargers where Zach Sealer on his own had a 74.2 PFF grade. And then Denver, week 11, where Zach Sealer had a 76.2 PFF grade. And then they were both, Wilkins, Sealer's best game, they were both back, and um, Sealer had like a 90 PFF grade, and Wilkins had like a 60. And here's the thing, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, that's because, you know, blah, blah, blah. Sealer does well because Wilkins is next to him. It's a chicken and an egg situation. Is it because now did Christian Wilkins do well last season in getting 10 sacks because Sealer was next to him and vice versa? Did Sealer do well getting nine sacks because Wilkins was next to him? It's like, but my whole point about that is let's not poo poo Sealer. Let's not forget. We have Zach Sealer still like he is not a bad defensive tackle. Let me, I think he's actually like one, a top ranked defensive tackle in the NFL. Like, and like I said, I understand we're sad about it, but let's not forget this man. Because I, I, I know we have to replace Christian Wilkins because we had a nice one two punch with Salt and Pepper. But let's give Sealer some respect. Let's put some respect on that man's name. He was disruptive as well last year. Like, there was a ton of games where he was getting strip sacks. He was scooping for a touch. Like, what, what, what game was it? He had a scoop score for a touchdown. I think it was the Titans game. Come on. So that's, all, that's all I wanted to really, I wanted to touch base on that. Because I'm like, why are we, why are we forgetting that way of Zach Sealer? Like, and don't get me wrong, if we're sitting at 21, and let me pull up some defensive tackle names, being that I haven't really, uh, we haven't talked about defensive tackles when it comes to uh, prospects, but we're sitting at 21, and Byron Murphy the second is, is there, I'm running to the podium. Then all of a sudden, we're good at defensive tackle. I think our defense is kind of, I think we replaced what we lost. You know, we got Fuller replacing... Um, Howard, we have um, Brooks replacing Baker. Then if we can get Murphy, who has a 90, well, he's number two defensive tackle in college football last year, 91.1 PFF grade, ranked 13th. We could get him. Kind of replaces uh, Wilkins. You got that salt and pepper back. So let's not forget about Sealer. That's all I'm saying. Let's give Sealer some love. But uh, that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you guys like the information I have dropped upon you. Um, I will see you guys on Monday, unless news breaks. Then you'll get news tomorrow. Uh, but I'll see you guys on Monday. We're going to start talking. Um, I, we're going to recap on Monday the 2021 NFL draft because that's what I do. I go back three years and see how these players have panned out. Was it a good draft? Was it a bad draft? So I will see you Monday. Recapping the 2021 NFL draft. Unless you want to start talking about guards, then I'll do that. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you in the next one. But like usual, stay classy. My friends out.